just sometimes doesn't work out. E4, E5, Knight F3. A little Italian. First time I played this today, surprisingly enough. It's been only Sicilians and French defenses. It's refreshing to see players way better than me blunder to Knights 2. Sucks though. There you go. Relatable. Knight, Bishop C4. I see, I see you're a streamer. Good luck. Thanks to my opponent. Okay. Now we play this this line c3. My course on this is coming out soon. D4 here. Very nice Gioco piano. This is all theory, so don't mind me if I go quick here. Learn your theory, you guys. We go check. What's up, Saucy Dragon? AKA Gavin. But facts. Yeah, no, yeah. So, queen here this and this and I would have to trade but still King G8 is not it yeah okay Queen here yeah this is not good so I out theoried them Queen B3 which is laying low I see three plans I want a castle black is supposed to go to e6 here and go rook e8 and eventually artificial castle back to g8. This is not a good move because this rook is boxed in. It's like if black is playing with less resources. And they should or could. Okay, knight c3. If knight takes, I can take and takes and takes. And this is still solid. And if takes here, attacking my knight, I can go queen takes d5, queen takes and knight takes. And we're still equal, but they have a isolated pawn in the center. Pretty good for me. Even, can I do knight takes? Queen takes. Okay, they go for the line I like more. A bit less tactical. Super sharp in this position when I have a king out is not ideal. So I like this. It's a bit more closed here in these two lines. And I can castle and really bring my advantage forth. C4, it's not that good. It weakens the D5 pawn. And my pawn here, I mean, this is weakened too. But this is uh, a bigger weakness to, to bear for black. I'm, I like this. Threatening this, right? And on bishop here, I can take. Rook here. I like this regardless. I was going to consider this or even queen d1 and, and out. But this is threatening multiple things. Right? I can just take here, right? It's a huge advantage. Okay, this looks so winning. Yes, it is. So always calculate. And this is GG. It's forced. You can't go to g6. Perfect. And we're right back in it. Let's go. Exactly the win we needed. This was my first ever 100% accuracy score on chess.com that I know of. There could be other games that I scored 100, but I wouldn't know them at all because I don't check game analysis often. In this game, I got zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero misses, and zero blunders. Here is the presentation of my 19 or 18 perfect moves. So we start out with the first 11 moves of just perfect theory. Opening or book moves, as they are called, will keep you at an even 100 score until you submerge out of theory. From then, you need to find the best moves. So, right out of theory, so the first non-book move I have is queen takes b4. This is a great move. I guess I'm just regaining the piece while having uncastled this king on g8. I'm going to be explaining every single move in depth so you can understand how I got 100 here. So queen d6, my opponent's first mistake here, I think it's more of a mistake because they had a better move uh, possible with queen g5 attacking a weakness on g2. Instead, they try to trade queens with queen d6, to which I play the perfect queen b3 move. The reason why this is so good is that I'm preparing my next move already. I'm preparing knight c3, which puts pressure on this weak d5 pawn as well as threatens this knight completely because this pawn is pinned to the king, which means we would take this knight entirely. And so this knight on c3 would dislodge this knight from e4, 
granting me just a full and better presence in the center. And so after my opponent goes c5, an aggressive push up to attack my pawn, I go directly knight c3, disregarding their threat on my d4 pawn because this is a greater threat to which they have to respond. And here, black needs to keep the tension on this d4 square pawn because this pawn is defending this knight on d4. You need to keep it, not only keep the pressure, but add on to it. And they do exactly not that. And that is a second inaccuracy for the black pieces. The reason is this pawn chain just becomes very strong. There's no pressure on him, which means this knight is solidified in the center for the rest of the game, more so to the fact that this bishop, light squared bishop, can never attack this knight on e5, and nor can these pieces, because they're heavy pieces, and this piece is defended by a pawn. So I move my queen to the best square, as said in the game. I had some very nice ideas with queen e8, and if this bishop moved, I had some queen takes b7 things here, so I was very, very happy. And so my opponent played another mistake, h6, not seeing a two tangent tactic that I have here. Queen e8 check, of which there are two variations, king h7 and queen f8. One of them is losing much more than the other. The less losing line is queen f8, to which I still have a tactic, queen takes f8, forcing the king to take here. And you know, uh, the king is enticed to f8, to which I have knight g6 check, fork on the king and rook, winning the exchange after king g8 I would take, and I would be up a rook against a bishop. Here my opponent did the worst of the two moves with king h7, to which here I have a forced winning tactic, queen takes h8, to wrap it up, finish up my 18th move, being a brilliant move, closing up the game, sacrificing a queen, and here, you can't even go here, I mean the knight is taking up g6, that's the cherry on top of the sunday, the king needs to take, they didn't take in the game, they resigned, but here I would have knight f7 check, the royal fork, the fork of the king and queen, making me win a full rook here in a completely winning endgame. And that is my first 100 accuracy score game. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some tips that I can recommend so that you get 100% on one of your games one day. Tip number one is know your theory in depth. In this game, I knew the first 11 moves of theory until which my opponent didn't know moves of theory anymore. And that's where they started playing weirdly. And as I said in the advice in last game, take advantage of that. Take advantage of that opportunity and see how they go wrong. Try to work your way around it. And that's what I did in this game. There are several avenues for you to learn your theory in chess. It's not a big known secret. Number one is YouTube. Searching the specific opening in YouTube really, really helps to find what you need and to learn. Study what you see on YouTube. Number two is either going to be some sort of course. So a chessable course, chess.com course. Uh, working with an engine, right, with a, with a premium membership. And number three, which is what works for me, is chess books. I love chess books. I pour myself into a chess book on a, on a day off. And, uh, you know, you just read the entire thing. You study the lines. You memorize them. And then you play them out in the game if, it, if the lines happen. Sometimes they don't. And you just memorize something for nothing for months on end. And then finally you'll have it. Work hard on the resources that you give to yourself. And number three is a little tactic tip. Look where your opponent isn't. And most times that I'll find tactics in games, they're less and less obvious because at a higher level, my opponent calculates for me and my plans. And it's the really, you know, side quest moves that I'll find that are kind of hard, harder to spot. And that's when I'll get the edge. And so in this game, it was a tactic, a queen sacrifice that you don't often calculate that won the game for me. So look where your opponent isn't because I'm sure that my opponent did not look for queen e8 and then queen takes h8, which is a surprise move. If you liked these additional tips, I highly recommend you watch my video. It's a four hour video giving only value and only tips for four hours, 82 tips to destroy your next opponent. Basically what I did is I grew from 2133 rapid to 2200 while giving move by move instruction during every single of the 19 rapid games I played and while giving you tips after the games for your benefit. I hope you enjoyed watching. Its link will be in the description of this video.